So I have told you this on many of these videos, if you are a long-term what culture wrestling, but I'm just going to say it again because, damn it, I believe in it, my opinions, and I am happy to say them out loud. I think Orange Cassidy is one of the best wrestlers in the world. I mean, if you need to have an opinion that has more weight than mine, even Will Ospreay commented on this after he did have that match with Orange after the Forbidden Door show. Let's not forget back in 2019 when he signed with AEW, I was spouting off this back then. So I predicted that he would become a world champion around about now in 2023. And while I kind of missed with that one, he does have the international title. I don't care who you are. He is having a terrific reign with this thing and he's gone out of his way to make me care which is doubly impressive because he's just a piece of fruit. So let us break it down. For me, at the top of the list, the real misunderstood genius of Orange Cassidy is that he understands that wrestling is meant to be fun. Oh my gosh, wrestling can't be fun anymore, even though that is the whole point. But he can do goofy wrestling, he can do serious wrestling, and even though he doesn't do that many promos, when he does, every single damn word matters. But seriously, he has made me laugh out loud, then about 35 seconds later, put on some kind of wrestling clinic and who else is doing that? We should be applauding Orange Cassidy all the time. In fact, I'm gonna do it right now. The point is, ever since he did arrive in All Elite Wrestling, Tony Khan has just understood the character of Orange Cassidy and pushed him wonderfully. And once again, don't try and argue this in terms of metrics, because not only do television numbers increase when he is on the screen, but go and look at his merchandise sales. It is frankly ridiculous. He makes it a lot of cash. So it just means that he is a star. And I actually think a lot of people did jump onto this bandwagon back in 2020 when he had that fabulous match against Pac at Revolution. But it all came down to Orange's weak kick, which people go, oh man, it's so stupid. Once again, that's entirely the point because the Newcastle man watched Orange Cassidy do this. He didn't sell them like they were gunshots. He didn't laugh. He was like, man, you're taking the piss out of me. I can't believe it. And he lost his damn mind. The commentators as well as Orange himself have made it clear though, this is him just trying to wind his opponents up, which he does do. Because as soon as they do lose their rag, what does he do? He takes advantage of this. So once again, he's also working in wrestling psychology. I don't know what I'm doing. This is not wrestling psychology. It's why Chris Jericho also pushed for a program with him because he totally gets it. Even though he said at first, you know what, this went over my head until it started to click. And sure, I would rather Orange Cassidy got a pin over the wizard rather than pushed him into some alcohol. But that's just sports entertainment for you. I ain't gonna get mad about that. It still meant that he had vanquished a legend. And also, I'm gonna keep going back to this because I think it's important. It was entertaining. And I'm sorry, if I sit down to watch wrestling, I don't want it to be a stressful experience. I just want to walk away going, I had a good time. And it puts a damn smile on my eyes. That's right, it doesn't even make any sense. What I really do think goes under the radar is that Orange has been doing this for ages now, and yet, da -da -da -da, it still works, and it's genuinely funny. I mean, he has even had the audacity to do this against people like Shibata. And once again, just listen to the fans. Every time he comes out, they go crazy. They react to all of his spots. And if that is the real barometer, when it does come to this crazy grappling world, then he may have more success than anyone. Because seriously, sometimes you don't have to hit the 180 button. You can just continue that momentum and evolve a little bit. I mean, look at Shawn Michaels. He was the heartbreak kid from start to finish but he just found ways to tweak it. The thing is though, this has been happening in front of our eyes, because I totally get at first, you could go, look at this guy. He's just some one dimensional goofball. But then all of a sudden you do watch and like, oh no, he is playing those mind games we've already talked about. And also, my word, he is really good as soon as the bell goes ding, ding, ding. He's also managed to become a personality without barely saying anything. And his body language is just tremendous. Like he can tell you he's happy, sad, angry, upset, just by doing a little bit of a wiggle. That's quite a success story. I don't care who you are. I think this goes back to the title and the whole misunderstood genius of it all. Because of course, promos are important in wrestling and he still does do these and he has been doing more of them recently. But if you can take every little word and make sure it means something, even if it's just to make you go tee hee hee and make you laugh, you're gonna resonate more with this guy and you're gonna like him. Also, he is just a lazy, can't be bothered surfer dude. And we've all been there. How many times you woken up on a Monday and be like, oh man, I don't want to do it today. So when you see someone on television doing the same thing, well, we've come full circle. This wasn't a fluke either, and instead we planted seeds in order to capitalize on this, which does indeed bring us to this international title reign. Because he has gone from half ass wrestler to one of the most hardest working champions there is, <laughs> to the point when Ready Paquette interviewed the other day, he was like, oh, Rene, 
I'm so tired. I'm so knackered. And he should be. By the time of me talking, I think he's defended it 22 times. He's also putting on clinics on every single occasion. And we have injected Story into this mix because he is pushing it a little too much. And now he's wounded his hand. So in every single match, there's jeopardy. So you're like, holy crap, man. Orange Cassidy could lose here no matter who he's facing because he has a giant wound right here flashing red. And you just know eventually he will be defeated because of this. And do you know how clever that is? It's super duper clever. You always need that 1% in every single wrestling match where you believe anybody could win because he just raises the stakes. He's essentially acting. Let's go through some of this list as well. I mean, there was Pac, there was Wheeler Utah, there was Claudio Castagnoli, there was Jeff Jarrett, there was Jay Lethal, there was Shabata that we've already talked about. I'll never get over that one. And I would say that every single one of these guys came out the other side with a little bit extra. Now, I do admit maybe AEW didn't capitalize on this in the best way possible, but that's a different video for a different day. But it didn't bear anyone, and nobody felt like they sucked. They just had a competitive competition, and the world was your oyster. I mean, somebody like Kip Sabian was proof of that, although he still found himself in a better position. And let's not forget that we did get Orange Cassidy versus Jeff Jarrett in 2023, and nobody was rolling their eyes, and they put on what I thought was a super fun contest. I mean, we were just in the Phantom Zone. Also, I do just want to double back round to Shibata for just a little bit, because he is a legend. And do you know what two people he asked to work with when he arrived in AEW? One was Brian Danielson, which makes sense. And the other was Orange Cassidy. So you're not going to listen to me, and you're not going to listen to Will Ospreay. Maybe you probably should listen to Shabazz. This is where I'm absolutely going to wind up the comments as well, especially if you're not on this train. Because when you do just settle things down a bit, Cassidy is essentially an old school babyface. That's right, I said it. I mean, for one, he has never hinted at turning, and nor should he. I don't think it would work for the character. It would just be silly. But he also uses his in-ring skills to try and get the better of his opponent. Think about all the times he comes out to make the save, which means, even if it's just in kayfabe terms, he's always thinking about others. But this will send people nuts as well. But in many ways, he's this generation's Ricky Steamboat. I'm not saying he's as technical or he's as whatever the word you want to use. But in terms of the image they radiate, I can certainly see similarities. Because he's just somebody you can love and that you can always love. And I'm going to throw a bit more evidence in there. Go back to the match he had with Ethan Page a few months ago. Do you know what they built that around? A body slam. And do you know what one of the most old school moves there is in wrestling is? That was gibberish. But the whole point is it's the body slam. And what I really enjoy is that I'm sure Orange is aware of what some of the people say about him. But he has never deterred and he is always stuck to his own path. Because of that, he is more popular and he is more successful than ever. And once again, he's making a bunch of cash. He has reached the tippity top. And I'm going to say what I said back in 2019 again here. If one day we did give him a world championship run, I will be sitting in that audience and chanting, you deserve it. So I suppose just to give you one last piece of misunderstood genius, it is that he does understand the lay of the land when it comes to modern wrestling. He can go toe to toe with anyone, but actually you could also put him in the territory days. He would find a way to make it work. Now, here's what I want you to do as a piece of homework. Go and tell that to one of the old guard that doesn't get Orange Cassidy. <laughs> they will go absolutely crazy. And ultimately, it doesn't matter. I just think he is absolutely superb. And there's not enough positivity in wrestling. So I wanted to throw out a big one right now. Now, of course, make sure you go into the comments below and let me know what you think about this. And if you're not on the Orange Cassidy boat, just be nice about it. And understand that he has done really super duper well. Hopefully this continues. Like the video, share the video and subscribe. There'll be another video on the screen. Please do watch it. Go to whatculture.com and check out that as well. And come say hello at WhatCulture WWE and Simon Miller 316. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you very much for watching me as always. I should probably say I interviewed Orange Cassidy recently over WrestleMania weekend. You should go and watch that too. It was a right treat for me. I'm a little bit of a fanboy, but who cares? That's what life is all about. Goodbye.